love an update. Like 90 Day Fiance, where are they now? Or an r slash legal advice post where the poster returns to tell us whether or not their tree lawyer bankrupted the guy who cut down their trees in gross violation of tree law. Things like that. Well, I'm happy to say that I am here today with an update for you. Uh, specifically an update to a video I made a few months ago entitled, Do Cell Phones Cause You to Grow Horns? Three question marks. In that video, spoiler alert, the answer was quickly revealed to be no. Uh, I talked about a study that was getting a lot of media attention for claiming that kids are growing horns uh, because of the way they stare at their cell phones all the time. I pointed out that even according to the study, it wasn't a horn so much as a small bony protuberance that you can't even see, uh, that the study was done by a chiropractor who sold products and tests to correct bad posture and their own data contradicts their findings that it's mostly found in young males and that nowhere in the study did they even bother to ask their subjects how often they use their cell phones, meaning there's absolutely no way anyone can claim any kind of relationship between the bone spurs and cell phones. Stupid study with bad science that spread like wildfire because of an eye-catching but baseless claim. Classic. Well, I wasn't the only one who was a bit skeptical about this study, and the negative attention apparently eventually convinced the journal that published this trash, Nature's Scientific Reports, to issue a correction. It is sadly not a retraction, which would just be them yanking the paper altogether. In a correction, a few paragraphs are changed to be slight, slightly less fucking stupid. Uh, unfortunately, this leaves the bulk of the study intact, which is a problem because as I went over in my previous video, the entire study is scientifically speaking trash. Sorry to break out the heavy science lingo there. The correction basically just removes any reference to horns and cell phones, which is pretty much the whole thing right there. But they are still claiming that the bone spurs are more often found in young males. The paper previously did not include all of their actual data. All they had was a chart, and that chart showed that women and older people were just as likely to have the spurs as young men. Uh, to address this, the corrected paper now includes their data, which is very exciting. PBS NewsHour asked some statisticians to take a look at the data and see if they could come to the same conclusions as the study authors found. I'm sure this is going to absolutely shock you, but they didn't. One statistician found that the data could suggest the spurs were more common in older males, but the only way they even made that work is because the original researchers broke their subjects' ages into categories that forced the youngest and the oldest categories to have the most subjects in them. The statisticians also looked at the original researchers' claim that bad posture was to blame for the bone spurs, uh, which they later suggested in the original paper was due to cell phone usage because you push your head out and down to look at your phone. That's known as forward head protraction. Jeff Goldsmith, a biostatistician at Columbia University, said, Among the variables Shahar and Sayers examined, FHP was one of the least predictive for these bone spurs. It was just barely statistically significant, but plenty of other variables were actually more significant. Why didn't they mention any of those factors? Probably because something like head injury in older men is more likely to correlate with one millimeter bony growths at the base of the skull is much less likely to go viral than cell phones make kids grow horns. It really sucks because as PBS points out in their excellent article, uh, once the misinformation is out there, it's impossible to fully correct it. The correction will never go as viral as the original misinformation. And even if it did, research shows that people very well could read that correction, but then completely forget about it, and in fact become more sure about the original misinformation being true. Human brains are fucked up, y'all. 
The good news is that this probably isn't a blow to all of peer-reviewed science. Uh, earlier this week, I talked about Peter Bogosian and his troop of anti-SJWs who made up 20 ridiculous papers and got seven of them published in a few journals uh, focused on things like gender studies. That news did go viral, and the journals that fell for it rightfully were quite embarrassed, and they retracted the papers. Venues like The Atlantic wrote up lengthy articles trying to decide what the Sokol Squared hoax means for academia, despite the fact that not even all of the journals in question were peer-reviewed. You can debate the ethics of that fraud, but it is true that those journals should completely change the way they operate and how they choose what papers to publish. But of course, it's being used to more generally trash the state of those specific, specific fields like gender studies, when in fact the problem is clearly not confined to a few fields of science that conservatives and the alt-right hate. The cell phone horn study was accepted into a nature publication. It's one of the most revered publishers in the industry. And this paper is complete bullshit. And even when the bullshit was pointed out to nature, instead of retracting it, apologizing, and stepping up efforts to weed out fraud and bad science, they issued a bullshit correction and left the paper as is. The papers in the Sokol Squared fraud had zero impact on the world at large, but your great uncle is going to be sharing this cell phone horn news at Thanksgiving this year, I guarantee it. And no matter how much you try to explain to him that it's bullshit, he's not going to believe you because he knows that cell phones are from the devil. Scientific publishing has a problem, and one of the only things that's helping to make it better right now are the outlets like PBS, who are fact-checking papers that have already been published. There are some other efforts happening behind the scenes, but it's extremely slow moving. So remember, just because a paper has been published in a reputable peer-reviewed journal, it doesn't necessarily mean it's legit. And please watch your posture. I mean, it's not going to make you grow horns, but honestly, it just makes everybody look better and you'll feel better too. You're welcome. <laughs>